change you like American slaves. See now, I don't already told you about having these people play up in your face. Aubrey Drake Graham is a Canadian rapper and this is how he used to look until black girls started liking beards and then now this is how he looks with the braids and the beard to match. And this right here is Drake's mama. Look, take a look. So her name is Sandra Graham. Well, it was Sandra Graham. Now she's Sandy Sher. And she is, as you see right here, Ashkenazi Jewish heritage. Mm. And this right here is Drake's papa. Apparently, he is from Memphis, Tennessee, is American born. And check this out, check this out. So when I Googled Drake's dad, there was some song that came up from some people named Arkells who made a song called Drake's Dad, where they talk about having met him and then he tells them the story. Oh my gosh, of how he became Drake's dad. Listen, and this is a picture of him right there. Look closely right there with all the rings on his hands like a pimp. Ugh. And in the song, Drake's dad apparently talks about how he met a Canadian girl, listen, who had a thing for Americans, right? Then they proceed to sing about how some grown ass men acting like boys, right? With some Peter Pan shit they trying to work out. Listen, it gets worse, it gets worse. Uh, did you hear that? That's part of the reason I had to put the captions on the screen because that sounded uh, very ambiguous. So they claim they're saying dig us on out, but to me, oh, it sounded borderline. Nonetheless, let's get back to Drake's dad. So Drake's father's biggest claim to fame is that once he was able to drum for the country musician Jerry Lee Lewis. He had a career in music, a career for several decades. And then when Drake was blowing up, he decided to switch over from being a country drummer. In 2016, he began to focus on music once again, this time as a singer and songwriter with a more R&B style. Oh. So now I don't know if Drake's father was an old PP bro, passport boy from back in the days and he found himself a Canadian girl. What, what we do know is that he was from Tennessee. He was a struggling musician who wasn't really hitting on nothing. He met a white girl who he could, I guess, freely be with in Canada. But despite being able to freely be with her, look at this part right here, right? Aubrey Drake primarily grew up being raised by his mom alone. And so we know what the data says. White wife, black husband shows that they have twice the divorce rate of white wife, white husband. And then when you see here, black wife, white husband ha are 44% less likely to end in divorce than white wife, white husband. Why do I say all of this? This is where Drake comes from. I wanted to provide this as context so that you can see why his lyrics are quadruply insulting. It is posited that part of the reason that black man, white woman marriages end in divorce so much is because the black men enter into these relationships from a self-hating standpoint. And they often get with women who don't like blackness as much as he doesn't like blackness. And then when all is said and done, it really kind of gets to a boiling point and crumbles because the foundation was a shaky one built on lack of self-love as well as an internalized hatred for the other, right? As well as an obsession with white men and wanting to prove something to them by living in their shadow and taking their quote-unquote scraps, right? But listen... In the black woman, white man relationships, right now, I'm not saying all of them are not self-hating. Some of them are. However, when it's time for love of blackness and self-love and love of the culture to be passed on, black women do a better job of that because the reasons that they're entering into these relationships are much different than the men are oft entering into them. So Drake, listen to the story, the background. 
So Drake was raised in Canada, number one, created of a Black American father and a Jewish white mother. And we know that the record industry is primarily Jewish. I think that that also plays a role in Drake's rise and claim to fame. But Drake has been playing in our face, becoming famous off the backs of Black people, Black women primarily, with these lyrics and the look and the aesthetic of Blackness, using the N-word and getting a pass because his father is Black, right? But when all is said and done, they show you their ass. They show you who it is that they truly are and what it is that they truly think of you. You want to hear those lyrics again? So he's calling women bitches, right? I, I don't want to play the whole thing because of copyright, but listen. So now there, I don't know if he's talking about one of the Tate brothers. I, I, I honestly don't know. I don't listen to his music, but it sounds like he's talking about the Tates. Listen. whipped and chained you like American slaves. Why was that necessary? Who were the American slaves? Who was enslaved in America? Who was exploited by this land? So number one, he's not American. Let's remember that. Number two, his father's a black American. Number three, he went through all of the chains of command and got this lyric approved in his song. Why? I mean, they don't give an F about you. They don't. They use you for their views, their rise to fame, and then they slap you in the face with a shitty hand. Why? He couldn't even say a slave so that it was ambiguous as to whether or not he was talking about a BDSM slave or whatnot. He had to specify. Disrespectful to your ancestors, I guess half his ancestors do because his father is black American, but you see the type of man that his father is, a handful of pimp chains and all, right? And notice he didn't say gas you and douse you like an Auschwitz grave, since his mother's Jewish and all, right? Is his misogyny showing yet? Is his lack of love for black people showing yet? Oh, let me, let me play this next part. And so he uses the N-word gratuitously, and it is allowed. And I bet that even after these lyrics come out, there will be people who will be making excuses for him. Making excuses for why he should, and it's not that big a deal. And it's like, when are we going to stand up? I mean, we have the Erica Menas, the um, whatever Lazadas. We got Cardi B's. How much more do we need? Black women... When do we say enough is enough? Now we know black men are not gonna stand up and say anything about this, but his concerts are primarily fueled by the dollars of black women. We know that we are the economic force that is supporting these artists. So black women, how much more? How much longer? How much more do these people who come into the community, hmm, listen, positing, as the cream of the crop of the community because they are multiracial or biracial, right? Coming in with the aesthetic that so many of us love and covet and want for ourselves and, and want to exalt and we exalt them, right? And then they turn around, give us their ass to kiss, slap us in the face with a shitty hand. And then we still continue with this Stockholm Syndrome worship of these people, allowing them to be like, we same Z, same, same. So I should be able to enter into this space and become the, oh, we're about to run out of time. I want to know what your thoughts are on all of this. Is this going to continue? We have to gatekeep. We must at this point, how much more? What will it take? 